Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let's make dua inshallah with start. Allahumma ameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta adal jalali wal ikram. Allahumma rabbana yassar wa la tu'assar wa tamim al khair wa bika nasta'in ya fattah. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Allahumma rabbana zinna ilma nafi'ah wa amala mutakabbala. ورزقا واسع وشفاء من كل داء فسبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين قال رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. from last class we mentioned the definitions on wasi and will we started the topic on actually now discussing a will and was he? And we learned the terminologies, the things that we should know in understanding what a will really have in it. So if we read one or go through one, we'll see some things in them that we need to know about. So the word was he really means a will. And that will refers to only one third of what can be distributed from our wealth. So when we talk about a will, a was he, we're only talking about one third of the wealth. The other Two thirds of that wealth is already prepared and given to us in the Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need not make decisions on that. Allah has already prepared that for us, and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has shown us by example through his ashab and companions how this was carried out. So we have many examples to show us that. And amongst that, the will is in terms that we would understand a will really means the directive of that individual that person who wants to give out something that's on page 1613 and we just go through to remember the terminologies so that will is really something that is a directive by that person who is given a testament as to what he wants done with that one third of his wealth and then a testator is the person actually who making the will that individual is called it his testament, testator, the, that testator, that individual who is actually carrying out this action, that individual of what he wants his will to be. And the beneficiaries are the ones who benefit from the testator. The executor of the will is that person who carries out what the testator, the one who has willed what he has for that group of people, beneficiaries. So he carries it out without fear and favor. Then we looked at the estate, really means all the properties, be it wealth in terms of money, land, building, assets in any form or cash or kind, credits owed to that person, whatever it may be, that is really referred to the estate. Net estate refers to the liability being paid off after assets have been what? Calculated. So when you pay off all the debts, then the net estate is what you really check now to give for distribution from that one third and then the two third all right then we look at the last terminology that is important in our will which is to probate our will to make it well known the power to distribute the wealth that i have and own this and this is mine and i can distribute it so the power to probate really means to give people the knowledge that they cannot come and claim how this man could give away something or how this person can come and give away something that belongs to me and I own it and he given it away in what? Inheritance, he can't do that. So that probation is also part of important for us to understand in a will. And we continue from that point when we start to discuss now will and inheritance. Some things that while we're going to prepare this will for this one third proportion of our inheritance to those beneficiaries, those who we want to inherit from us, considerations must be given to the following things. One, Consideration prior to the preparation of a will for inheritance is, or inheritance, one, how to record my inheritance, have that book I said, prepare it. I draw a will calling upon myself and you to fear Allah, referring to the executor, the one who carries out the what? Will. So that person firstly refers to him, and then it goes on to the beneficiaries that they should accept this in fairness to what was prepared and accept the order of Allah in what is being received. And they should not what? Waver in this. Next, seek proper knowledge, 
that is required for one to establish. I mean, we mentioned that hadith which the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had told us, which he says, Allimun nasa, teach, ta'allamul fara'idha, teach, learn fara'id, the knowledge of inheritance, and teach it. As well, ta'allamul Qur'an, learn Qur'an, wa'allimuhu, and teach it to people. Fa'inni imru'un maqbudun, that certainly, that time will come, that this knowledge about faridat, when I will not be here and in such a condition when the knowledge about this will become what? Removed from the people to such an extent that tadhahara al-fitna, fitna and corruption will come out of the distribution of what? Wealth in inheritance. People will start to fight one another over what? Property. Who should get what? And how much I should get? And what I deserve? And we mentioned how important it was that people fight all their lives concerning this. Years will pass in cases in court for people to get some portion of a land. And they will invest almost the same money to receive what they would actually get. Alright, so they spend all that in court behind lawyers and they get back the same thing. So sometimes you ask yourself, why what? What did the fight really worth in your time and your life and all these different things and the stress and all that goes with it. Alright? So he said that time will come. Hatta yakhtalifa fihi farida. That people will just go so far in their, their, their destruction and in their disputes in respect to farida and, and inheritance that la yajidan. You will never find someone who will give any clear action or any clear perspective on this. That they'll reach so far they don't even accept what people have to see when it comes to the knowledge about Farida. So we say that one thing today is that the knowledge of this particular subject, Islamic heritage, inheritance, is at a loss in the Ummah. And not only in our part of the world, many parts of the world today, this is the case. And in many, many cases, we hear only here, you only hear, this is happening. Mother say, well, I can't give this, this particular son of mine or this particular daughter or these couple of, because they're actually fighting down for everything. They can't get anything. They will not get anything. I take them out of the will. So sometimes in cases you would see where it is talking about Muslim families who would actually pull out their own children out of the will. And whether that will is valid or not, we have to know. And we'll come to that. So one is seeking proper knowledge. Next, get the confirmation from your family that you have conveyed the message of Islam to them and that they will follow the tenets of the religion after your death as they do at present. And that is important. That we should command our people in worship and in the, in the, in the aspect of our deen. This aspect of what? Understanding the deen, our family should have this within them that I am leaving this world. Well, my condition like this, I could part any time. But I want that you all confirm to me that you all will be living according to this deen. But more than that, accept what is in my will. Accept what is in my will and do not what? Fight over it. So we have to fourthly ensure that your children do not fight over wealth. That they do not fight over wealth. You may say, when you were very young, you were loving and considerate to one another. You will tell them like this. Do not forget this in your latter lives when you are married and have children. And you have children even in times when this love and regard is put to test. Because it really is put to test when money comes in front. Then you know the difference. You know, we really say, when you see money, then you really see what people really make of. You really see their true colors. Whether they are prepared to what? Subdue or what they really made of. Sometimes all the Islam is in all the worship in the masjid, Quran, dhikr, talk, bayan, all different types of things. But when it comes to the money part of it, the Islam takes a different tone and a different clothing. A different view, a different individual, a different cup. So, it tells us, with regards to this, you are going to be put to a test. And this test is, do not get so involved in the love of your wife or husband and children and wealth and property that you snap ties with your brothers and your sisters and omit to serve and respect your mother or your father, as the case would be. 
that you know this happens out of this we see many people you know they say i will never go back by my mother's house ever again i'll never talk to them again because what they do to me i didn't get anything how they could treat me like this why they should treat me like this i will never talk to them for the rest of my life and on the other hand what may be the other case that the mother may be thinking vice versa or otherwise you know and the condition is that this is the nature that we should advise them this wealth should never come in between the relationship that allah has brought us in this world when you came into the world as a son or a daughter that condition was not based on what wealth it was never based on what the principles that i own so much as i come into the world or that if you are to have me as your son then i must get x amount of wealth before i come to you as a son it was never like that never was it the intention for a parent to ever have this as their main consideration in making a child rather it was for many other reasons looking after them caring nurturing for them and for data in other words to look after them when they get old i never mean and i'll never say it was about giving them wealth and riches and sometimes we lose focus on this point we lose focus and direction when it comes to that we think to ourselves now it's just about money because that person no longer there then we feel we can what flex ourselves in such a way that we want what we demand and no one knows how much i put into this this family and so much different types of talks would go around so these ties are at one so sensitive and is invaluable that you will not be a loser if you forego colossal wealth to maintain them sometimes if it is you're fighting for 10 feet of land or extra portion or extra this whatever it may be in extra or you you, you you feel like you get short change don't fight it down if they want it they could have it whoever it is because you're not living for it the relationship is more valuable than that relationship between brothers and sisters and siblings they are more valuable than any of these things so if they want it maybe they will consider at some point in time what they have done wrong and even if they didn't consider that they have done something wrong and they are feeling that they have done right allow them to be like that allow them to be like that forgive them forgive them maybe that's an opportunity to feel you get additional blessings maybe this was meant for you to get additional blessings allah put you to a test a test that you are willing to even forego the affairs of this world for the love and the obedience of allah because allah put me with a family that i can even forego this now i'm not saying that you should just you know subdue yourself very quietly and just stay quiet quiet like that you know you, you must be able to have a negotiation you negotiate but you don't take it to the point that it will cause a relationship to be severed you have a right utilize that right to the capacity that it will not cause separation in a relationship if it means that a third party or some negotiated person must negotiate on your part do that if it's that you fear that you will retaliate or become anger and a state of anger that you will do something wrong or say something bad just stay away from it put somebody else to say something instead rather than you take that action all right and many brothers and sisters in many cases have what attorneys just line up and wait for cases like this just to deal with what they learn never forget that by loving one another and holding together you will not only gain the pleasure of allah and advantages in the hereafter but also earn solace comfort honor and progress in this life because whenever you give up something from this world allah puts a bigger one for you he gives you something better he puts greater opportunities for you the thing is we must be prepared to understand these things that wealth is not what we are after even if we know that we have been wronged we have been oppressed we have been taken away from the right that is duly for us in such a case it is mentioned here that this love is more better for us to maintain this relationship with one another is more strong and more better for us in the hereafter and not only there but in this world because real is that an honor does not lie there and progress in life allah will always give barakat because a person can have everything one day he takes all of himself 
Subhanallah, in many cases come like that. The person, they fight, they fight, they get the whole house, then they sell it, and all the money they just disappear. It vanishes. And they were fighting for this house for so much years. And when they get the money, when they get control of it, they sell it and all the money gone. One sickness take, and that was the end of it. Money just gone. So you tell yourself, what was it worth fighting for something that you lose your family and you also what? Lost what you really was after. And there's no one to care for you in such a relationship afterwards. So, you know, maybe consider all these factors that everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, you know, it is by the bounty and the grace of Allah. And those who want to take from it, let them take. Because Allah is our razak. He continues to what? Provide. He continues to provide for us. Alhamdulillah, we can eat. We have a place to sleep, something to drink, and we can do all these things. That is sufficient. What my father had or my mother had, it was theirs. Not mine's. It was theirs. And we should not feel that we are what? The rightful owners of it. Unless that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, by His will, has made proportions that we should accept in that two-third inheritance. And in the one-third of inheritance, in that which was given to other people or to other relatives who are not within the line of relationship to receive direct inheritance, then we must also note that if my father or my mother will for such people to have such things, then it's all well and good. Or for such organization to have this a proportion of my wealth, then let them have it for their benefit for the akhirah. This is what it's about, investing our wealth for the akhirah. So all these considerations, bearing it in mind, we should... Look at it and fight, tell and ensure to our children, do not fight. Do not fight. Make it a clear point because when death comes, we have no more control. But if we could get them beforehand to prove before us and swear before us that they will not fight, then it's out of our hands after that. After that, whatever they do is not within our control anymore. But we know that, oh Allah, we could stand before the day of Qiyamah and say, I left this world, but I left it making my position clear with my family concerning my wealth. But we leave our wealth and leave our children in a state abandoned in the way that they will fight and have confusion over this. Then we are leaving room for us to be what targeted on the day of Qiyamah. For us to be targeted at by our own siblings, by our own children, by our own wife concerning what, or our own husband concerning wealth that was left behind that is the fear that we should remove before leaving this world the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i guarantee a house in the center of paradise for the person who shuns quarrel even though he is on the right for him one reward a house in the center of paradise subhanallah just to avoid confusion. Just to stay away from confusion. Thus, we must act on the teachings of the hadith of the Rasul and, the Quran, and also what the Quran states in inheritance and mold ourselves so that we avoid disputes and quarrels to get our rightful dues. No matter how plenty they are, we may go so far as the, to relinquish our rights. To prevent controversies. If we act so, we will get a better and higher recompense in this world and the assurance of a perpetual residence in the midst or in the middle of paradise, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta give us that at that time if we are faced with such conditions that we are prepared to what? Withhold and endure whatever may come from such things, inshallah. Those are three, two, four considerations so far. All right. Looking at the next consideration that one must have in preparation for a will and inheritance, after seeking these three things, knowledge and confirmation from our family concerning what their dean would be, and then also ensuring that our children do not fight, then we should encourage our family upon the five times daily salah, the males at the masjid and, the, and as much as possible, they should be at the masjid performing their salah and the females at home performing their salah. Ensure that these things are done. No. This is part of the life that we should have in our consideration of our will. Because this is something that will be taken away from us in the day of Qiyamah. 
when that authority that we have to deliver to our children the rights of making sure that they are performing their salah and ensuring that they are in order, if we do not do this on the day of Qiyamah, they will be running after us. They'll be running after us and blaming us and want to take away from us. So once we have that authority and that right to do and to command our children and our family upon this, then we take full control of it and ensure that they have confirmed that yes, I have said such and such concerning salah. And you have done such and such. Have I instituted salat within you? Then they say yes. Alhamdulillah, that's all you need. So on the day of Qiyamah, they cannot say, well, you know, my father never tell me about salah. My mother never tell me about salah. They cannot say that because you already had that testification from them. It's not like setting them up, you know. It's really making sure that they don't set you up. That is what it's really about. That they do not fail in their rights. Encourage your family on zakah, optional charity. Always put aside some monies from their income, earnings to assist the needy, and any virtuous cause to spend on it. Always encourage them to do something like this before you leave this world. Because this is part of making them understand that wealth is not to hold on to, but to give and to utilize in the best manner possible. That is the act of what charity is about. And it's actually breaking down that quality of hoarding. The hoarding is a quality that Rasulullah SAW says he never feared that a Muslim will die without Iman or leave this deen or worship an idol. But what he feared the most, that this world will come and take over the affairs of us. And when this world and the affairs of this world and the love for wealth will come, it will take away the deen. He is not fearful that you will not worship Allah or worship that you will worship an idol. He says he don't have to worry about that. But when this affair of the world comes, it destroys everything. This was his biggest fear. And the biggest fear has become the reality of the world and the Muslims today. That the love for wealth has taken full control of us. Full control. But to reduce that, let our family start to learn to what? The art and the love to give and spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Letting them know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna Allah hashtari anfusakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already purchased our lives. Bi anna lahumul jannah, that Allah will grant us paradise. Let them know this. That our wealth and our spending is already owned by Allah. It's a car of the loan. And Allah always asks us, who is there willing to spend that Allah can increase their rewards from it? Encourage our family on this so that they will not have this quality of hoarding and have this quality that they must have everything for themselves. Rather, that if they have the opportunity to give, they will always give as much as they can give. And if they can give us the greatest portion in giving, they will give it away for the sake and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that way, they remove that, that quality that they want to hoard. And I want this for myself and I want that for myself. By this, it is hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove that quality that will destroy them even in the affairs of the wealth of this world. It's also important that they know that sadaqa, charity is what? A light. And that light is what is the blessing for a believer on the day of Qiyamah. In other words, on the day of Qiyamah, a person, you will see them with what? Not coins or paper money or any type of things. On the day of Qiyamah, they will be seen as their rewards as light. Light. Light will be that which will adorn a believer. The salah that we perform and the positions that touch the ground, those parts of the body that touches the ground, what is mentioned about them? They will become light. And there are many places in the Quran and a hadith that talks about our reward being in the value of a light. And that is how you recognize the value and the worth of a believer in the akhirah. How much light will emanate from this individual? Seek forgiveness, tawbah. That's the next quality that we must instill before in this inheritance. Make sure that we seek forgiveness, tawbah, for ourselves, for all the wrongs that we have done. Ensure that all categories of sins are covered in your repentance or in our repentance. Whatever we have done wrong, make sure we did not leave out any of them. Always make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is part of our will and inheritance that we must have forgiveness. With 
be with whatever type of shortcomings there may be, short bid, shortcomings in the religion and duties to Allah, or oppression against another human being, or the misappropriation in dealing with in your lifetime with wealth or whatever it may be, end of misappropriation, deal with those things. Trash them out in this world because if we shortchange anybody in this life, the currency of the next, next life is not money, it's deeds. It's deeds. Ask your family to seek forgiveness on your behalf before and after your death. Ensure that they forgive you and you forgive them and ask them to seek forgiveness for you. Important. A prerequisite as well. You must understand that, that we want forgiveness and they must not go with the idea that they leave. Well, he died and gone now. That's the end. Of it. So she died and gone. And I love that plenty much and, and love her so much. And probably annually they remember us. Or a few years may pass and they remember us. But really and truly, every day, the Quran tells us in many different types of du'as to remember our father and our mother. Make du'a for them. Make du'a for our relationship. They owe those near and dear to us for their forgiveness. Ask for Jannah for them. Ask for the paradise for them. Ask for the highest of elevations, Jannatul Firdaus for them. This is what we should be doing and have part of Tawbah and understanding that forgiveness is important for us in living this world. Thinking of leaving our will, think about forgiveness as being part of it. Ensure, ensure that your women and men members of your family stay away from backbiting as it will eat away all good deeds. Never thought about it, but just think carefully. You're preparing a will, and you talk about what? Tell them, don't backbite. So what do I have to do with a will? What that has to do with a will? Well, you know when you die, that's when most backbiting start. Because everyone talking to each other bad, he used to do that, and he never take care of pa, never take care of ma, but I used to do everything. And everyone talking against each other about what? What they did. Ghiba, backbiting one each, each other. And then they're watching and smiling after. Like nothing happened. But they're cutting one another short, as we would say. Backbiting all the time. We have to ensure that this doesn't happen. We have to ensure that this doesn't happen. Because in Ghiba and in backbiting, it is what? Like firewood. Eating away and burning away from out. That wood, that fire causes that. Yahrikunar, al khashab, that burns away that wood. Same way, our good deeds will be burnt out, backbiting. Simple as backbiting. And our own family, you know, we encourage them to do good. But if we don't tell them as well, see this bad, stay away from it. Stay away from it. Because if you only go upon this, all the good that you have done will be finished. And don't make it on my account. That because of my leaving this world, that you now start to do what? Riba and backbiting. Slandering one another, destroying one another because of my leaving. It shouldn't be because of me. And promise me that you'll not backbite because of me. If you do it after, on your own without me, it's all up to you. But make sure it's not because of me. Make sure that is in the will. Because you don't want them on the day of Kiyama say, well, because you know you didn't do what you're supposed to do, we started to backbite each other and they come back at you with it. Ziba and backbiting is one of the most dangerous things that happens out of this. We must also ensure that someone in our family memorizes the Holy Quran. I never think about that in our will. Eh? That someone in our family memorizes the Holy Quran. If none of your children did so, then seek help from your children's children in getting one of your grandsons or granddaughters to memorize the Holy Quran. What is the benefit of this? Quran, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells us that that person who memorizes the Quran and implements its law and does not go contrary to it, his reward is with Jannah. Not only that, he allowed to be taken with him amongst the people, his father, his mother, and other relatives directly in line with him to Jannah and intercede on their behalf. Hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tirmizi, find such a hadith. Quran tells us as well 
خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهَا We did the hadith prior to this that tells us about that as well. Learning the Qur'an and teaching the Qur'an is among the best and most important things that we do. It comes in the hadith with what? Faraid, inheritance. Subhanallah. Allah incorporates both of them. Learning of faraid, knowledge of inheritance, and learning of Qur'an. Because in it, there is a darajah and a status and an elevation that it removes that which is connected to wealth. Reading Quran removes a great level of that desire for wealth. Even though Allah provides wealth out of reading Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides reason something, but it actually removes that, that greed within a person. It's a higher level of dhikr. That love and desire for Quran brings that as well. Encourage our family on Quran before leaving this world. Make sure that they're on Quran. Make sure that our family can actually read Quran. Do not die and leave this world. And you have not gotten your children or gotten your children. And by testimony, telling them and swearing to you that I have taught you to read Quran in Arabic. How many parents would have died and left this world and their children could not read Quran in Arabic? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them and have mercy on them. But those of us who are here and are alive and we have children, make sure that we do not fall short. Because this part of our inheritance can bring destruction to us. Because on the day of, that day of Qiyamah, Hujjatun Laka Alaik, it can be for us and against us. This Quran can be for us or against us. And our own children will use this as a tool against us. Our own family. The Quran. We do not see it as being important at times. We see what secular and other academic education has been more important for the survival on the face of this earth. And at the end of it, they become very smart and love wealth. And they fight for wealth. And they know how to use one another. And we see it in reality when people become so wealthy, it is not that it doesn't happen. We actually see it and hear no, no cases like this. That the wealth that the parents leave, they actually go after it in a, in a more smart way. And they find all the loopholes to get to it. Because we have educated them on a system for the love of wealth and how to acquire it and how to snatch it and how to take it. But we have not educated them on the Quran and the wisdom of the Quran, how to give it, how to spend it, and how to bring barakat and blessings out of it. And it also blends support to that person. The Hadith of Rasulullah tells us that that person who reads Quran every day, what is the darajat and the status of their parents in the Akhirah? Their parents will be wearing crowns, on their heads, robes of honor, and they just ask Allah, why, why, why we have these things for? Where is it coming from? He says, because of your children who are always in the tilawat of Quran. Always in the tilawat and the recitation of Quran. The elevation goes up higher and higher in Jannah. It will be mentioned that that person who learns Quran, subhanallah, when he leaves this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he enters into Jannah, says, you read Quran. And as you read, your elevation goes up and up. And whenever you stop reading, that's where your, your abode will be in Jannah, in paradise. The more you read, the higher you go. This is the nature of the value of Quran. Memorization, Memorization of Quran. So the value of this, the value of learning Quran and ensuring that we have someone in our family who, who are hafiz of Quran is also important. Also important. You know, we always look at and say, well, what did this person do with their life afterwards? You know, just come half a Quran and that's the end of their life. They call it a living. What are they going to do? You know, we ourselves thinking like that. We ourselves thinking like that. And what do we expect for the akhirah for ourselves? We are securing the dunya for our children, but we have not secured the akhirah for them. And even for ourselves. When we fall short on Quran, we fall short on the, this world and in the hereafter. Remember in our will. How valuable this Quran is. How valuable this Quran is as we are alive on the face of this earth. Losing it in this life is also losing the most valuable asset for us in the Akhirah. Having no connection to the Quran is like having no connection to the Akhirah. Having no connection to Allah. That's the importance of Quran. This is the kalam and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the words of Allah. The dhikrullahi akbar is the best of all dhikr. That's why in our will, we must ensure and make sure in preparation of it that these things are covered. Quran is also one of those things that must be covered. It must be covered. Reach that point, that means also what? Ensure during illness, person becomes sick when they become old. They're about to die. During illness, that your body 
is maintained according to the Sharia. That nobody decides to what? Change up whatever you have within the Sharia and you maintain in your life in a particular way. You become old, you become helpless, you really can't help yourself no more. Now, if your children are not educated along the lines of what? How to do the necessary etiquettes and adab of cleanliness in Islam. And you reach old age and you can't help yourself in these things. What type of cleanliness are you going to attain even at that time? If they don't know what to do. And making sure even being unconscious that your body is given the right treatment and not maltreated or disrespected. Important. That if I am in this condition and I marry this condition, no one knows what condition we are going to be in. Who is going to be there to support us? Ensuring. And that's why, you know, sometimes the best way to, to teach our children and our families is that we must live by examples. Our own parents, they become old. And we don't what? Go and attend to their needs. Look after their needs. Bring along your children. Let them see how you will take care of your parents. Likewise, they will know what they have to do in respect to us. But if we cannot even take care of our own parents... And leave them aside, put them in a home, or do something of the other kind. When our turn reach, what do you think they're going to do? They learn by that example. Put us in that home, leave us there. No one, don't really care how much, what is necessary. And understanding is that ensuring carefully that looking after ourselves, when we can look after ourselves, that there is someone who can do that for us. Who can do that for us. And in the time of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we've seen examples of it. Once going out into jihad in the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one companion says, I would, I would love to go, but my mother is like this. She's ill. What did Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? You stay here. This is bigger than that. The khidmat and service for your mother is bigger than that what you think jihad is. Or going out in the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is greater. Looking after that person who is old. So we understand here that even in that condition, we must make it our way and known to what? Those around us, how to ensure that our bodies are maintained according to the Sharia. And if on the throes of death, I utter some contrary thing to the will, preparing a will, you know, and you say something contrary at this point in time, seek the advice of a scholar to counteract my statement or its honest validity or it being invalid. Because under that condition, we might say something that is contradicting what we have written in our will, whether it should be accepted at that point in time or rejected, and considered just being under pain or under some, under, you know, your mind straight away from what you actually are, or you're no longer in a conscious state to actually think. So you're saying things out of what? Natural mind, and in this condition, you're saying things. So you advise them. If this be the case, note fully well, get someone who will be able to give us some light and enlightenment as to what is right and what, whether or not this should be accepted or not. And because there are questions that should be asked and should be known whether this person was sane at this point in time or were he not in that state or was he not, not in that state of having that full memory and capacity of making that decision for saying such a statement. All right? And that should be considered in the making of our will as well. Because you don't want that the last moment of your life, you say, I'd Nobody getting any from me again. Finish. Destroy that will. I don't like that all again. I, I fed up all you. You say all kinds of different things. And I say, well, this that is not in the will. He said, no will again. Can't happen like that. We have to secure ourselves before this happens. See, I might say things out of context. Maybe I don't know. But ensure that it what? Does not affect what I have written down. Next. Enter my body speedily into the grave. Don't delay my what? My janaza and burial. Part of the will. Ensure that you're not waiting for this one or that one or doing this or doing that. All right? Put it part of your will at in prior to these conditions and are mentioned. That if I die away in a native land, do not bring my corpse to my homeland. Wherever I die, I should be buried there. And so too was with the Sahabas and the companions of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, the martyrs and those who had died in the battlefields, they were buried right there and then they were not brought back to their hometowns. 
Wherever they went, they were buried there. Arrange for its burial in a Muslim graveyard with all Sharia compliant laws from the place where I die. Make sure it follows whatever is necessary by the Sharia and the compliant laws of that particular place. If you disregard my instructions, the sin will rest on you because the Sharia is explicit. Note, this could be documented in the will as a stipulation because anytime they misuse this body that you have the right to prepare and bury according to the Sharia and they do contrary to it, they will be held accountable because you have made it clear this is how you want your body to be taken care of according to the Sharia. Right? So the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and he says, O Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, do not delay in three things. The prayer, when it is due. The funeral, when it is ready. And the marriage of a girl, when her match is found. Yeah, it is Muslim. Right? So, in these three things, it mentions here, most important, well, janaza tu ida hadharat. Once the janaza is prepared, bury. No time for what? Delayal. And that is important in consideration of our will. Think about it. That we want this to be part of it because we don't want our children telling us. You know, I've seen cases where funeral is performed in Muslim rites. And then after it is done, what? In our next religion, Christian, be it or Hindu, whatever other religion. Because the children of what? They have gone to different religions. So each one of them, final ones, will, I will take the body now and I have full rights and I will do this with it. Many cases like that. And we talk about far off cases. Cases right in our own country. Not far off. Not remote. Are not long distance apart within recent times. All right? It happens within our, in our own homeland. All right? Next. When my body is brought out of the house, it, is generally, it generally happens that women wail and approach the entrance of the, of the grieved and let them, and they want to grieve over it, let, them, let it be that with them, with patience, teach them patience. And endurance as to not to destroy my destination and what is to come. Make sure that nobody are crying, bawling, wailing over me. And that is also important that we inform our families. Because sometimes emotions do take over and thinking what is lost. And feelings is the only thing that is acted upon. Not that you will not feel sad. Not that you cannot cry. Not that you should not feel what? That sense of losing someone. But it should not be that we express such feelings that is going to destroy that one who we love so dearly in his destination to the akhirah. Or to her akhirah. So that is consideration for our children as well. Advise them. Listen, you love me? If you really love me, then you should know that this is going to happen. And the reality is that we are all going to die one day. But when this happens... We should not be in a point that we cannot what, control our emotions to the extent that we will be real and do things that are not right. Some people say, well, take me instead. Why, cannot I, why I couldn't die instead? I make all sorts of, of statements that are what, contrary to what even our dean teaches us. All right? But this is not what we do. So we ensure of this so that we know that on the day of Kiyama, they can't say, you know, well, you, you left your children in the condition that they are willing for you. No, make sure they didn't do it. Leave in this world. Promise me you won't do this. Ensure that my wife follows the rules for it that as I have taught her. And important as well. That you know she leaves this world, you leave this world. What about your wife? Make sure she knows the Eddat period. How long she must wait before she can remarry or do whatever she wants after the Eddat is done. But ensure that because that is also going to affect us leaving the world. We never thought about it like that. But ensure that they know about the rules of Iddat. Teach them this before passing and leaving this world. Before leaving this world. A wife may ensure that her husband take care of her burial rights and fulfill all related expenses as well. So a wife could tell her husband, you have to stand the funeral expenses and he has to accept that because that was his responsibility anyway. So if she dies... He has to carry out the duty of burial and expenses. On the other hand, for the husband, he must make sure he has the money available. Or get help, or whatever is the case. But it's not upon the amount of the wife to really do this. She does it out of her own free will. 
she will be rewarded for it. But the husband has a responsibility for taking care of the burial of a wife. All right? And 14 and mentioning here, it says, calculate all mis ibadah, types of worship to Allah that was not fulfilled because of some reason or the other. Salah works out a figure per salat missed. Fast, the fidya of each day fast missed. Zakat and estimated and close as possible to pay more if possible for zakat that was missed over the years. Hajj badal, make someone make hajj for you, should be done by someone of your, on your behalf if you have never done it on your own. Sadaqat al-fitr, qurbani, over the years missed when it, is, it was valid upon you and such ibarat that you have fallen short in, in all respects. Calculate all of these things. Some people, ulama have gone to the extent and mentioned that even for salah, the value of one fidya, value of one fidya, which is approximately last week, probably about $15 or something like that, is considered the value for one missed salah. It doesn't mean that it is equal to it. You know, so, me, I'll pray again, I'll pay $15 for one salah. So, you may woke up to the five times daily salah, 15 by 5, plus with your salat, which is a wajib salat, counted at 6. 15 by 6. I'm not saying that this is the exact thing, but they estimate that you could use this as a means of compensation with the hope that Allah will forgive us. So imagine 15 by 6 per day and for how much years they didn't pray. As I use so what? Covering the cost in terms of an atonement. Hopefully, Allah knows best. We cannot judge this. But at least have some type of way you can actually recompense for this. Recompense for this. The best would have been qadha for every missed salah. But you have reached a stage in life that this never happened. It has never happened. Then what do we do? We know we cannot finish it in time again. Life has put us in a position where we can't even finish all of this. So then we have to make sure now that our financial position takes care of all of these things. Take care of all these things. If we're looking for an opinion on these matters, we should find it from someone who can give us the best opinion how we can ask, ask, attain, at least from our wealth, how we can resolve all our shortcomings in our deen and how we can distribute it in such a way that I can feel. Because this is what I have. I don't have the physical strength anymore. I no longer have that. At least I have this wealth. Let it do something so it can be a means of atonement for me. Allahu Alam, it lies in the hands of Allah. Allah alone knows if forgiveness will come out of it, if anything will be accepted of it. But we can try something because the wealth is going to do nothing for us if it is not utilized in some means to benefit us when we leave this world. Because all these shortfallings in our ibadah and worship will be held for and against us on the day of Qiyamah. So make sure our wealth do something for us if we didn't make it. Let us do something to at least benefit from it. Because out of it, we should calculate and benefit out of it, inshallah. So we stop there at that point in time, inshallah. There are a few more points that one should consider, and we'll do this next week, inshallah. Let us make dua, inshallah. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma anta as-salam. Minka as-salam. Tabarakta adal jalali wa likram. Samiyana wa ta'ana gufranaka rabbana wa ilayka al-masir. Tuba na astaghfirullah, na astaghfirullah, rabbi min kulli dhambi wa tubu ilayh. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah al-azim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi al-akhirah. Hasanata wa qina adab al-nar. Subhana rabbika rabbil islam a'isifun. Wassalamu ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Oh uh-huh.